you can read about this, and you can see videos of it, and you can talk to people that have done it. But until you strap in and smell the jet fuel, the exhaust, the smells of the cockpit inside, and hear the burner, the engine, and feel the sensations, all these orchestrated like a symphony of a way of life. It's unexplainable. I really wanted to have one more burner light before I went to fighter pilot heaven, hopefully, but um, I wanted to be around people from my tribe, people that had uh, seen the elephant, as John Wayne used to say, and had been in combat with the plane. The Super Sabre Society was uh, formed back in 2006 and we're a fraternal organization of about 1,400 former F-100 pilots. Airplane itself is initially most famous because it was the first aircraft that could go supersonic, straight and level. But what I like to describe the F-100 as the apogee of its career was a seven-year period that it flew in Vietnam. Primarily during that seven year period, it was flown in South Vietnam with a primary mission and close air support for the Graham troops. What does it mean to be an F-100 pilot? It, if you walk into a place where people know aviation, uh, they know that that was the trickiest airplane in the Air Force to fly. And if you pull back in that airplane and, and don't hit rudder and just aileron, you will wind up upside down, just like uh, doing a saber dance. It'll tell you how tricky the F-100 can be. Then if you could fly an F-100, you could pretty much fly everything, yeah. I met the best pilots in the world, the best friends. The crew chief that I had in Vietnam, he waxed my airplane, Al Patinode waxed my F-100. It went 20 knots faster than the regular F-100, so you could see it a little bit further away. I kidded him about that. The crew chiefs kept us flying, and they were really the best guys in the world. And we had a very close relationship I'm lucky to have with this man. I was there a month, and rockets started hitting the base. It was the beginning of Tet. February 68, I started flying three missions a day, every day, day and night, until Tet was over. So it was about a 40, 50 days period where we didn't shut down the engines in very close proximity to friendlies, and dropped a lot of bombs and just tore them up. When people ask how many were killed in Vietnam, they make the mistake by saying 58,000 were killed. 58,000 people weren't killed in Vietnam, two million were killed something to think about. The Misty's were a special group of 157 of us that flew a special, at then time, top secret mission uh, in the F-100 in Vietnam. Early in the war, they had the small prop-driven airplanes, the 01 and 02s, that were trying to do forward air control airplanes flying, uh, finding uh, targets up north for the bomb-laden fighters. And the defenses were just so dense the slow airplanes couldn't survive. And so they decided to try the F-100 as a forward air controller airplane. So we used the two-seat F. You flew one mission in the front seat, one mission in the back seat. The front pilot flew the airplanes. The back seat pilot carried the maps and the handheld camera, whatever, and, and it worked the radios controlling the strikes. The whole idea was you went out and found stuff and marked it with you know, smoke rockets from fighters. Now, the missions were long and they were hard. We flew at low level to find the targets, and the missions were four to six hours refueling two or three times. We had a high loss rate, about 28% of the airplane, of the pilots got shot down, some of them twice, as a matter of fact. Flying in SAM and AAA environments, we had no chaff, no flare, uh, no, no ECM pods, uh, no tactics, no knowledge and what have you. I mean, we were out there by ourselves alone, way out of radio contact with anybody, and uh, we would lose a guy and then spend two or three days looking for him and never found him, you know. I'm struck by how far we have come. We, ha we had more fun in the old Air Force. We left more brain cells on the barroom floors around the world, but we can't hold a candle to today's Air Force. They can do everything we wish we could. 
They can find targets. They can hit them day or night, all kinds of weather. They can survive with ECM, with all type of stuff. All we could do is go out and rely on our skill and our courage. Tough war and tough times because we didn't have the right equipment. Now we've got it. Vietnam, I figured it was my war. It was the F-100's war. I dearly loved flying the F-100. I learned much about it by just practicing. I got through all of its disabilities, the things that would go wrong with the airplane. I had a lot of incidents with the airplane, and I learned to fly it, as some people say, with your first two index fingers and your thumb. Because the F-100 was not a stable lady. You take your hands off it and she would wander. Couldn't just trim it up and let it go because it wouldn't stay there. You had to constantly control that airplane. You had to fly it. When I got into the airplane, I always felt like I was climbing on top of a bull. I'd lay my, lower myself down into the cockpit and buckle everything up. But the mission didn't start until I got kicked in the butt by that afterburner. And I loved that afterburner and I loved that airplane. We experienced the incommunicable experience of war. We felt and we still feel the passion of life to its top in our youth our hearts was touched with fire. To be in that tribe, it's good enough for me. <laughs>